Come with me. Hi, thank you for joining us today. I have a wonderful guest. Her name is Morone and she is from South Africa. And the reason I asked if I could interview her for this series on love in the time in, of COVID is because she actually had a remarkable, what I would call an epiphany, not sure what she would label it, but she had a remarkable change of heart during COVID, even though she is quarantined for much of it, for much of the past year. This is um, almost uh, nine or 10 months now, I've lost track into our having to social distance and um, be at home with our uh, either alone or with our partners. And, you know, a lot of people, in fact, I would say most people have this belief that their difficulties in their relationship is due because they can't take space due to COVID. So they're blaming their difficulties with one another on the fact that um, we're in a pandemic and they can't take space. But Morone is proof that that's just an idea, that it's all how an understanding of how the mind works that shifts everything. So I'm gonna let you go with it, Marone, and thank you so much for, for agreeing to be part of this. Oh, it's such a pleasure, Lori. Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, my husband and I, okay, I'm married, um, so, but my husband and I, um, we had a, a, a good relationship already before this, but you know, there were, you know, the minor, this and that's a little um, uh, getting too much up in each other's faces sometimes. But I think our biggest thing was a lot of times um, I would go to him with a with uh, you know something that's troubling me, and and that happened <laughs> quite a lot actually since the since the whole COVID thing and the quarantine, you know, the stress build up and all of that. And um, he tried to support me, but it 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 felt like he was trying to fix me, you know, like, okay, so you feel this way, so you need to do something to to make it better. And, you know, I would just feel like it's not really listening and I'm not really allowed to feel what I'm feeling. So that's kind of where where we picked up a little bit of um interactions with with each other. And he would feel like quite helpless because then I would get irritated with him um, and so on. And that is kind of just a cycle that goes, you know, then I would go to sleep, I would feel better, um, everything would go well, when things started to get tough again, that would play out again. And um, what happened was he started to get into uh, the, the three principles. And he started to, um, you know, have his own journey with this idea that, uh, you know, the reality out there is not really something that we take in like a lens, but it's actually something we project out there. So without our thinking, you know, it doesn't really exist. We make it, you know, it's kind of all us that we're projecting on there. So we are experiencing our thinking. So um, then he tried to try to, 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 well, not really teach me that. It was just more of like, tell me about his things. But, you know, you would like to journey with your partner as well. So I think he wanted me to get onto the bandwagon. And it was really great. I could imagine it in my mind, but in my body and my experience it wasn't there yet and um so that started to come in when when we had our conversations and when i was going through a difficult time trying to go through support oh you and initially i felt so irritated and angry with him because i i you know i'm sitting and telling you you know i'm so stressed and i'm having a hard time and you know i feel really down everything is really dark and black and heavy and you're telling me it's all of my thinking like really <laughs> So that actually felt like there was putting like a distance between us and oh shame poor soul he was just trying to support me and he just felt helpless and you know the same pattern repeated and even worse and then what happened one evening was we were sitting on a on a couch it's like this brown couch in our living room and um he started to experience the three principles more than just intellectualizing it you know, because both of us, we're very good at intellectualizing and actually hiding behind um, our rationalizations about things. But he started to actually experience it. And what happened that night was 
absolutely amazing. We just sat and um, once again, I was in a very down mood. Everything felt very heavy, very black, you know, almost like you don't have, you don't even see how you're going to carry on after this. It's like a very, very darkness that I experienced. And he just sat there and just listened. He didn't speak much. I, well, if he did, I can't remember what he said. He just was there. Like we connected on such a deep level that you don't need language to connect with. And for the first time, I felt like, oh, I'm allowed to feel this way in the space. And there something started to shift. You know, something started to shift. And um, he started to change as well. I could see him, he, the way he responds to things outside of himself, the way he responds to me, he started to change. And about a week later, you know, I was in a very bad space. I had a lot of emotional pain. It wasn't going well with me, I think, as most people would term it. And um, we were sitting on the brown couch again, and he started to, once again, you know, tell me about the three principles. But it wasn't this time from a space of, oh, I have these things, I think it can help you. It was from a very deep, compassionate, I understand what you're going through and this is how I see what's going through with you. But it, I didn't feel like he's telling it to me because he wants to change anything. It was more of like a, I'm understanding what's happening and it's okay. And it was just like that, like a click of the fingers, a blink of an eye. My understanding of it just sunk into my body instantaneously. And I got it in that moment. I got it. I got this revelation. I just, I got it. And I, I would want to explain to you what the it is, but you know, it's formless. I can't really express it in language, but, and then this whole weight just lifted. Everything changes. Nothing outside of myself changed, but everything changed in my experience. And um, it was amazing. It was the first time I've actually really felt that intense joy and peace, you know, and um, it was revelationary. And I thought it was gonna, going to go away because that epiphanies tend to do that, um, you know, after two weeks and three weeks and so, but it's about like nine months later, I think. And yeah, it's still with me. So, and so lockdown for me actually turned out really great. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, isn't that something really that, um, yeah, you have to, see it on a deeper level. It is very hard to put words to it, but you know it when it happens, you can feel it's an insight that you're seeing inside yourself. It's yeah. not words that you're memorizing or, you know, it's funny how people will say things like, I understand what the three principles are, mind, thought, and consciousness. I understand that. And they'll intellectually say, yeah, it's those three principles that create our experience. So it's really, we are thinking our reality. It's not reality that we're recording inside of us. It's coming through us. We're projecting it into the world out there. So they can go through, you know, words to explain it, but do they really understand it at a deeper level? And you know, when that happens, it's not something you can make happen. But it tends to happen, what I've seen uh, with clients in, in my own life, when we go back to the source and we're listening to Sid Bank's uh, recordings or reading his books, uh, to me, I mean, that's where I had my first major shift was at a talk of his and now they record it and people can listen and not have to travel to the talk they can listen in their own um the comfort of their home so it's a wonderful thing and mm -hmm. um and the reason i provide mystery school for people so it'd be great to have you with us you know you're you're bringing this into your practice moroni as as a life coach right and you're in south africa I don't know if I mentioned that at the beginning. So if you could just say, we have a little more time. If you could just say a little bit about how your practice as a coach changed with this revelation, as you say. Um, 
well i'm uh i did coaching first and then i moved into psychology so i'm more in the psychology field right now um still use some of a lot of my coaching though uh, but i think one one thing that you it was a major thing so i was an intern last year so it's very scary in the beginning you feel really like you have imposter syndrome and um i was so nervous of making a mistake um with my clients because our sessions are um recorded so for our supervision you know so that our supervisor can look at it and so on so i was so nervous of making a mistake because of the recording of it you know that's kind of captured and you can't get away from it i would become paralyzed and froze and so caught up in my thinking like i would want to say something and then in my head it's as a whole, whole conversation but can i say this but is it the right thing to do and i'm so up here i'm completely stuck and there's a disconnect between myself and the client and that completely flipped over that changed so much where even if i have a thought like what what if this is wrong then i'm like oh okay you're a cloud passing even if it's if it's a mistake whatever i'm going to learn from it <laughs> you know so immediately the thoughts got less the thoughts got less threatening and when they were there i was able to kind of okay there are thoughts in my head i'm not going to pay much attention i'm going to be with my client right now and i've experienced making such deep connections with them there were some some sessions where you know i i i never i usually always planned what i was going to do like i need to do this and this and this as a way to kind of cope with the anxiety of it all and i stopped that completely it was almost like waiting for a gift like what's going to unfold in this session you know and there were times when um when i talk with them i don't plan what i'm going to do it i just kind of follow my gut and the wisdom within and sometimes you know that was the right choice sometimes it wasn't the right choice but if it wasn't the right choice i learned from it and we move on from there so basically the biggest thing that happened um to me was i realized that i cannot make a mistake because mistakes doesn't really exist right yeah uh, isn't that remarkable really that um, it's just being in the moment with the yeah. person and letting your deeper knowing letting mind guide you yeah. <laughs> there's a wisdom so the more you're out of your head the more you're connecting with yeah. the person in front of you and just listening at a deep level not yeah. through all this um thinking that yeah. we did yeah, yeah it's it's revolutionary really and you know that's why they're calling it a paradigm shift going yeah. from outside in or behavior modification or um what else is it called so many things um yeah the cognitive restructuring coming, what's that the cognitive restructuring yeah Yeah. 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 No. It's like another level. It's up another level. Yeah. You know, and it's teaching it's teaching uh, this is the thing that I that I experience and what I really want to teach other people is that that realization that there's nothing you need to do to be good enough. You already are. You just need to realize that. Right. That's the biggest gift, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And that oh. nobody is ever broken. or lacking yes. um i love that saying that mm. everyone has a core of health they yes. just lose sight of it through yes. their contaminated thinking as as sid banks called it you know mm. how we contaminate our experience with our personal insecure thinking yeah it's all and i was very skeptic at first actually you know i would like kind of test it out like um, for example my relationship because a lot of times when we had like you know one of these experiences and these encounters where um there was a disconnect that would kind of hang in the air for a bit it would take like a few not a few days maybe like a day or two or three to really just stable out you know so i was skeptic when i had this experience like okay this is great but now what about the things in relation to other people which is i think the most difficult types of experience you get you know people trigger your own stuff and that's where you know the heightened emotions come out and and so on and it's remarkable what's all happened with my husband and and myself you know um 
when we're both in like a low mood space and um, you know the awareness is not really there uh it, it would continue on a little while but it was never again has intense because even in that low mood space we both know the stories that we are telling ourselves in that moment is not really real even if we're struggling not to believe it we know that it's going to be a point in time where we're going to see that it's not true so that already lifted you know the seriousness of it and um at other times if one of us was in like kind of a more higher mood space with more awareness we have this metaphor of a snowball like uh, not a snowball a snow globe you know that you you kind of like shake it and then all all the snow just going around and then you have to wait for it to settle a little bit and then you know we would tell one another maybe the maybe the globe is just shaken a little bit right now maybe we just should just wait for it a little bit to settle down and then we can continue this conversation again uh, and it, it changed it changed everything you know we have a deeper connection since that day it's not you know what's the thing it's not conditional anymore there's nothing he needs to do or be for me to be able to okay there's nothing he you know really can do to upset me in a long term it's we've we've grown to love each other really unconditionally and when it's conditional we just know that the consciousness and mood is a bit low and that's going to change right it, when, when you slip into that conditional love you know that you, you think you've lost it um you know it's temporary thinking yes so you don't take it seriously it's just yes, temporary absolutely. like absolutely. having a headache just yes rest <laughs> yes yeah that's a good metaphor i like that one <laughs> It's funny, yeah, and I love the metaphor of the snow globe too. It's um, yeah. it's a great way to describe, you know, it's hard to put into words a feeling how we understand this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you know, it brings so much hope, Marone. That's you know why I'm so glad that I was able to interview you. Thank you, because it brings so much hope to people who are suffering needlessly. And especially during a pandemic, that yeah. it's possible to have such a major transformation. Yeah. In the midst of something that people think is just um, terrible, awful. Yeah. But that's happening out there. What's happening inside of us is a whole different yeah. story. We could be, you know, in the midst of our worst moments when there is no pandemic it doesn't matter what's happening to us exactly. aside from abuse obviously you know you're going to protect yourself and get away from an abusive situation yeah. but um we're so resilient and yeah. it resilient in the moment we can have a bad moment and then we if we don't take it seriously we'll bounce right back yeah 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 I mean that doesn't mean we're never going to feel down or sad or experience pain but it's it's never it's never again that feeling of hopelessness right that it accompanies before right you know and I, I'm also reading um currently reading Eckhart Tolle's work and it's it's so beautiful it's making this distinction between pain and suffering you know where pain is in the moment if you're going through something right now you've lost someone and a lot of people have lost people during covid it's it's heartbreaking you know there's there's pain of course it's going to be pain you you just lost someone but he he makes a differentiation between pain and suffering when he says pain is in the moment pain is something you experience now you connect with it you feel it you can feel it in your body and it's something that's happening now and it's you respond to it really appropriately suffering is when you're stuck either in the past or in the future you're recreating it for yourself it's something that's happening in yeah that you don't realize that then it comes down here. Yeah. yeah, it's remarkable, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, But I don't know if you know the, the book recently out by Hannah Studley. It's called mm -hmm. Painless. She talks about, she was in enormous pain for many years from um, accidents that she had. And she realized that she was struggling with it because she'd have a lot of thinking going on about the pain. She is pain-free today, oh, absolutely pain-free. And so it's a great book because it, not only for physical pain,
but emotional yeah. pain as well, how we keep things um, stuck, yeah. how we stick ourselves, just yeah. get ourselves all stuck because we make something out of physical or emotional pain mm -hmm. as though it's a real thing. It's happening mm -hmm. to us. And so, and yes, of course, you know, you, you fall, you hurt yourself, you break a bone, it's going to hurt. But yeah. the more you, you hang on to the thinking about it and dwell on that, the more you're entering then into suffering needlessly. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I know, you know, I've had the experience, I've had a, a broken wrist in the past and there were times when it hurt a lot but then I'd get distracted my mind was on something else and I totally forgot I had broken my wrist <laughs> oh. oh yeah I've also experienced that yeah. yeah but you know that's just that's kind of the evidence one needs to know the you know intense connection between our thinking and our experiences and what we feel in the body right you know? right yeah yeah so any last words that you'd like to um, you know, let people know how to get in touch with you um, anything else that you want to add? Mm. Usually this is, you know, the, do you have any questions or anything to add part? I'm, I'm the worst at because it's like, similarly, if someone asks me, tell me a joke. In that moment, it just goes right out of my head. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, we can write. Uh, if something occurs to you later, we'll just write it in the comments. Um, you know, the, the, the content section of YouTube. Yeah. That's perfect. And I'll send you a copy that you can distribute as you'd like. Okay. Yeah, I'm so Thank glad you. that you took the time to do this. It'll be so valuable for a lot of people. Thank yeah. you, Stephen. Sorry. Uh, I'm actually, you know, I'll make sure that um, I get your approval for this first, but I'm part of a uh, local TV, monthly TV series, and uh, I'd love to run this. And so I'll submit it there and see what happens. Yeah. I'm very more than welcome to. Yeah. So yeah. thank you so much, and we'll be in touch. And um, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye.